a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Papua New Guinea Papua New Guinea, officially the independent state of Papua New Guinea, is an Oceanian country that occupies the eastern half of the island of New Guinea and its offshore islands in Melanesia, a region of the southwestern Pacific Ocean north of Australia. Its capital, located along its southeastern coast, is Port Moresby. The western half of New Guinea forms the Indonesian provinces of Papua and West Papua. At the national level, after being ruled by three external powers since 1884, Papua New Guinea established its sovereignty in 1975. This followed nearly 60 years of Australian administration, which started during World War I. It became an independent Commonwealth realm in 1975, with Queen Elizabeth II as its head of state and became a member of the Commonwealth of Nations in its own right. Papua New Guinea is one of the most culturally diverse countries in the world. It is also one of the most rural, as only 18% of its people live in urban centers. There are 852 known languages in the country, of which 12 now have no known living speakers. Most of the population of more than 7 million people live in customary communities, which are as diverse as the languages. The country is one of the world's least explored, culturally and geographically. It is known to have numerous groups of uncontacted peoples, and researchers believe there are many undiscovered species of plants and animals in the interior. Papua New Guinea is classified as a developing economy by the International Monetary Fund. Strong growth in Papua New Guinea's mining and resource sector led to the country becoming the sixth fastest growing economy in the world in 2011. Growth was expected to slow once major resource projects came online in 2015. Mining remains a major economic factor, however, local and national governments are discussing the potential of resuming mining operations in Panganamine in Bougainville province, which has been closed since the civil war in the 1980s-1990s. Nearly 40% of the population lives a self-sustainable natural lifestyle with no access to global capital. Most of the people still live in strong traditional social groups based on farming. Their social lives combine traditional religion with modern practices, including primary education. These societies and clans are explicitly acknowledged by the Papua New Guinea constitution, which expresses the wish for traditional villages and communities to remain as viable units of Papua New Guinean society and protects their continuing importance to local and national community life. History. Archaeological evidence indicates that humans first arrived in Papua New Guinea around 42,000 to 45,000 years ago. They were descendants of migrants out of Africa, in one of the early waves of human migration. Agriculture was independently developed in the New Guinea highlands around 7,000 BC, making it one of the few areas in the world where people independently domesticated plants. A major migration of Austronesian-speaking peoples to coastal regions of New Guinea took place around 500 BC. This has been correlated with the introduction of pottery, pigs, and certain fishing techniques. In the 18th century, traders brought the sweet potato to New Guinea, where it was adopted and became part of the staples. Portuguese traders had obtained it from South America and introduced it to the Moluccas. The far higher crop yields from sweet potato gardens radically transformed traditional agriculture and societies. Sweet potato largely supplanted the previous staple, taro, and resulted in a significant increase in population in the highlands. Although by the late 20th century headhunting and cannibalism had been practically eradicated, in the past they were practiced in many parts of the country as part of rituals related to warfare and taking in enemy spirits or powers. In 1901, on Garabari Island in the Gulf of Papua, missionary Harry Dauncey found 10,000 skulls in the island's longhouses, a demonstration of past practices. According to Mary Anna Torgovnik, writing in 1991, the most fully documented instances of cannibalism as a social institution come from New Guinea, where head hunting and ritual cannibalism survived in certain isolated areas into the 50s, 60s, and 70s and still leave traces within certain social groups. Little was known in Europe about the island until the 19th century, although Portuguese and Spanish explorers such as Dom Jorge de Menezes and Nogo Ortiz de Rites had encountered it as early as the 16th century. 
traders from Southeast Asia had visited New Guinea beginning 5,000 years ago to collect bird of paradise plumes. The country's dual name results from its complex administrative history before independence. The word Papua is derived from an old local term of uncertain origin. New Guinea was the name coined by the Spanish explorer Inigo Ortiz Durrites. In 1545, he noted the resemblance of the people to those he had earlier seen along the Guinea coast of Africa. Guinea, in its turn, is etymologically derived from Portuguese word Guinea. The name is one of several toponyms sharing similar etymologies, ultimately meaning land of the blacks, or similar meanings, in reference to the dark skin of the inhabitants. In the 19th century, Germany ruled the northern half of the country for some decades, beginning in 1884, as a colony named German New Guinea. In 1914 after the outbreak of the World War I, Australian forces landed and captured German New Guinea in a small military campaign. Australia maintained occupation of the territory with its forces through the war. After the war, in which Germany and the Central Powers were defeated, the League of Nations authorized Australia to administer this area as a mandate territory. The southern half of the country had been colonized in 1884 by the United Kingdom as British New Guinea. With the Papua Act 1905, the UK transferred this territory to the newly formed Commonwealth of Australia, which took on its administration. Additionally, from 1905, British New Guinea was renamed as the Territory of Papua. In contrast to establishing an Australian mandate in former German New Guinea, the League of Nations determined that Papua was an external territory of the Australian Commonwealth. As a matter of law it remained a British possession. The difference in legal status meant that until 1949, Papua and New Guinea had entirely separate administrations, both controlled by Australia. These conditions contributed to the complexity of organizing the country's post-independence legal system. During World War II, the New Guinea campaign was one of the major military campaigns and conflicts between Japan and the Allies. Approximately 216,000 Japanese, Australian, and US servicemen died. After World War II and the victory of the Allies, the two territories were combined into the territory of Papua and New Guinea. This was later referred to as Papua New Guinea. The natives of Papua appealed to the United Nations for oversight and independence. The nation established independence from Australia on 16 September 1975, becoming a Commonwealth realm, continuing to share Queen Elizabeth II as its head of state. It maintains close ties with Australia, which continues to be its largest aid donor. Papua New Guinea was admitted to membership in the United Nations on 10 October 1975. A secessionist revolt in 1975-76 on Bougainville Island resulted in an 11th-hour modification of the draft constitution of Papua New Guinea to allow for Bougainville and the other 18 districts to have quasi-federal status as provinces. A renewed uprising on Bougainville Island started in 1988 and claimed 20,000 lives until it was resolved in 1997. Bougainville had been the chief mining region of the country, generating 40% of the national budget. The native peoples felt they were bearing the adverse environmental effects of the mining, which poisoned the land, water and air, without gaining a fair share of the profits. The government and rebels negotiated a peace agreement that established the Bougainville Autonomous District and Province. The Autonomous Bougainville elected Joseph Carby as president in 2005, who served until his death in 2008. He was succeeded by his deputy John Dabinaman as acting president while an election to fill the unexpired term was organized. James Tannis won that election in December 2008 and served until the inauguration of John Murmies. The winner of the 2010 elections, as part of the current peace settlement, a referendum on independence is planned to be held in Bougainville sometime before mid-2020. Preparations were underway in 2015. Numerous Chinese have worked and lived in Papua New Guinea, establishing Chinese-majority communities. Chinese merchants became established in the islands before European exploration. Anti-Chinese rioting involving tens of thousands of people broke out in May 2009. The initial spark was a fight between ethnic Chinese and Papua New Guinean workers at a nickel factory under construction by a Chinese company. Native resentment against Chinese ownership of numerous small businesses and their commercial monopoly in the islands led to the rioting. The Chinese have long been merchants in Papua New Guinea. Government and Politics
Papua New Guinea is a Commonwealth realm. As such, Queen Elizabeth II is its sovereign and head of state. The Constitutional Convention, which prepared the draft constitution, and Australia, the outgoing metropolitan power, had thought that Papua New Guinea would not remain a monarchy. The founders, however, considered that imperial honors had a cachet. The monarch is represented by the Governor-General of Papua New Guinea, currently Bob Dada. Papua New Guinea are unusual among Commonwealth realms in that Governors-General are elected by the legislature, rather than chosen by the executive branch. The Prime Minister heads the cabinet, which consists of 31 MPs from the ruling coalition, which make up the government. The current Prime Minister is Peter O'Neill. The unicameral national parliament has 111 seats, of which 22 are occupied by the governors of the 22 provinces and the national capital district. Candidates for members of parliament are voted upon. When the Prime Minister asks the Governor-General to call a national election, a maximum of five years after the previous national election. In the early years of independence, the instability of the party system led to frequent votes of no confidence in parliament, with resulting changes of the government, but with referral to the electorate, through national elections only occurring every five years. In recent years, successive governments have passed legislation preventing such votes sooner than 18 months after a national election, and within 12 months of the next election. In December 2012, the first two readings were passed to prevent votes of no confidence occurring within the first 30 months. This restriction on votes of no confidence has arguably resulted in greater stability, although perhaps, at a cost of reducing the accountability of the executive branch of government. Elections in PNG attract numerous candidates. After independence in 1975, members were elected by the first-past-the-post system, with winners frequently gaining less than 15% of the vote. Electoral reforms in 2001 introduced the limited preferential vote system, a version of the alternative vote. The 2007 general election was the first to be conducted using LPV. In 2011 there was a constitutional crisis between the parliament-elect Prime Minister, Peter O'Neill and Sir Michael Summer, who was deemed by the Supreme Court to retain office. The standoff between Parliament and the Supreme Court continued until the July 2012 national elections, with legislation passed effectively removing the Chief Justice and subjecting the Supreme Court members to greater control by the legislature, as well as a series of other laws passed, for example limiting the age for a Prime Minister. The confrontation reached a peak, with the Deputy Prime Minister entering the Supreme Court during a hearing, escorted by some police ostensibly to arrest the Chief Justice. There was strong pressure among some MPs to defer the national elections for a further six months to one year, although their powers to do that were highly questionable. The Parliament-elect Prime Minister and other cooler-headed MPs carried the votes for the writs for the new election to be issued, slightly late, but for the election itself to occur on time, thereby avoiding a continuation of the constitutional crisis. The crisis was tense at times, but largely restricted to the political and legal fraternity, plus some police factions. The public and public service stood back. It was a period when, with increased telecommunication access and use of social media, the public and students played some part in helping maintain restraint and demanding the leadership to adhere to constitutional processes. They insisted on having the elections so that the people could say who should be their legitimate representatives for the next five years. Under an amendment of 2002, the leader of the party winning the largest number of seats in the election is invited by the Governor-General to form the government, if he can muster the necessary majority in Parliament. The process of forming such a coalition in PNG, where parties do not have much ideology, involves considerable horse trading right up until the last moment. Peter O'Neill emerged as Papua New Guinea's Prime Minister after the July 2012 election and formed a government with Leo Deal, the former governor of East New Britain province, as deputy prime minister. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?